สวัสดีครับ uh, good, good morning uh, good day management fund manager analyst and all participants online I would like to welcome everyone uh, to the our Thai Union Result Conference call for the third quarter year 2020 result announcement. Today, uh, the executive who are joining us today, including Mr. York Ari, and of course we have uh, Mr. Ludovic Gagne, uh, head of a group accounting and controlling on the line, dialing directly from France. Uh, Ludo, please unmute. You you ask to unmute, okay? Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Good morning for everyone. <laughs> okay, as as usual, well, without needing to say much, I mean this event will comprise of both the presentation session and that will be ended by the Q and A session. The whole session will be approximately one hours. And uh, please do know to everyone, this session we conducted in English language. So uh, anyone who wish to raise any question, please feel free to either uh, type in your question in the chat box in the Zoom uh, comment box, or you can uh, please raise your hand uh, in. Uh, in, 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 your, in your Zoom application, and we will be asked you to unmute. That way we can keep it orderly fashions, okay? Uh, without further ado, I would like to pass on the stage. Uh, uh, comment box, or you can uh, please raise your hand uh, in, uh, in, 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 your, in your Zoom application, and we will be asked you to unmute. That way we can keep it orderly. Apologize. Uh, Facebook is delayed uh, from the actual broadcast by about 10 seconds. Okay, uh, without further delay, uh, without further ado, I, mean, I would like to pass on the stage to Mr. York Ari, our group CFO, uh, to start and commence this uh, result presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Convest. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning and uh, good evening and good afternoon to Europe, to the US. Uh, and here to Thailand. I'm speaking here today with Kun Best and the team in front of uh, lovely Bangkok's uh, skyline. The blue sky in the background is, of course, uh, the, the, the real picture that you see behind us when you look out of our windows. <laughs> um, well, not quite. And, and we got to adjust for, uh, for Ludo and uh, his background. It's his actually, I think it's your living room, if, if I if I recall that, right? Yeah, your office, exactly, exactly. So look, um, we do not know the results of the US election uh, today. We have one candidate who uh, declared victory and I, I think he had to stand, be stand, uh, stand corrected. Uh, but we will we'll see a little bit later, maybe after this call, we know more. Uh, what I uh, do hope that every one of you is uh, healthy and safe, your families are safe, uh, you're not affected by COVID. Uh, this is a very important thing for us. We, as a food company, we take a lot of uh, care of our employees, of our uh, customers and consumers, and also you. We really want everyone to be safe. Uh, we are in the lucky situation here in Thailand that we have no actual cases uh, uh, in, in Thailand. We can move around quite freely. Uh, I know in Europe, this is not the case. People uh, are facing a lockdown. Uh, in the US, the situation is not easy. We are uh, updated regularly through the board of Red Lobster and which state is in lockdown and which state has to close or can open restaurants and dining halls. So this is a very difficult situation. I hope you uh, and all of our friends are uh, healthy and safe um, and your families are as well. So without further ado, uh, let's go in medias res and uh, talk about page one, or I think here it's page six. Uh, look, I, I, had, I had probably the most relaxing uh, board meeting today in my whole seven years. Uh, a career in, in Thai Union. Uh, we had a great quarter, um, but I still want to raise uh, a little bit of caution for the rest of the year. We don't exactly know uh, where the year is headed, uh, but let us take this time to really look at the numbers that we have. We have uh, first time ever 
above 2 billion Thai baht in quarterly net profit. And you will see a little bit later why the actual underlying net profit is even higher than this. Um, so amazing net profit result uh, for the quarter. Um, we have a strong top line growth. So we continue to take uh, some advantage out of a, a difficult situation. But you will also see we have uh, still ongoing difficulties around Red Lobster and some uh, effects there. But we can really weather this. And together with the underlying business that we have, uh, we really have a strong result here. Uh, and look, the frozen business is back on track. We had a lot of questions from you over the last quarter and at the end of Q2. And in some calls afterwards, how is the frozen business doing? Frozen business back on track. Um, maybe one or the other small opco uh, that we have uh, that has a lot of exposure to China, especially. Uh, we are a little bit behind, uh, but there's a real uh, a growth trend coming back. We are above last year on frozen and profitability is improving. Uh, we've ended the quarter with revenues of 34.8 billion uh, in top line. That's a 9.3% year over year growth. It's mainly driven by 5.2% volume growth. We see ambient, uh, our canned and ambient business uh, growing 12.4% year over year. Consumers do eat more ambient seafood at home. They recognize that, see, that ambient seafood is a healthy and delicious product. And we see a lot of new customers and consumers coming into the category that uh, in the past never consumed or ate uh, canned seafood. Uh, and, and people do like it. They eat more at home. Uh, so this is a real uh, positive for us. The frozen business reported a 4.7% year-over-year growth. F&B outlets uh, are opening up. Uh, now, of course, we had uh, some headwind, uh, some tailwind uh, coming from uh, European currencies. So uh, without FX impact, the growth was a little bit smaller, only 6.4%. That is still more than double digit G normal regular GDP. So really good, strong uh, ambient seafood growth. And Ludo has made uh, uh, an analysis and, and put an analysis in place where he really showed for the last three, four quarters how the ambient and the pet care and value-added business was growing in absolute terms, quarter over quarter, year over year. Uh, so really great. And even the frozen business in this quarter has achieved year over year uh, uh, value <clears throat> increase. Gross profit, 18.2%. And those of you who follow us on a regular basis, uh, you will recognize uh, this is now a real next level step up uh, where we are uh, seeing now for the second quarter in a row an 18% gross profit. Great uh, uh, result, 225 basis points uh, above. Uh, mainly from ambient, also from our pet care business, uh, also from our frozen business. And when I say ambient, uh, I'm sure a lot of people think uh, branded in Europe, but that is not the case. It is, in fact, our private label business here in Thailand that it has implemented a lot of plant productivity, uh, a lot of efficiency measures in its business that has been able to really... Uh, take advantage of scale effects, of synergies among the group, purchasing uh, uh, benefits. And it is our business in the US that has continued uh, additional demand from the market. Uh, and we're able to really have an extra demand that is not pantry loading, that is real additional incremental demand in the market. Operating profit. 2 billion. Uh, we have a little bit higher SGNA expenses, as you will most certainly ask a little bit later on. We're at 12.4% uh, of SGNA. Main, mainly two reasons, some smaller reasons as well. Main reasons is 
we have restarted uh, investing in the top line, in the marketing expenses. Uh, we do feel this is necessary to communicate with consumers. Uh, we do feel it is necessary to get back into an NPD mode, uh, bring new products out. And on top of this, we have decided to impair our business, our Canadian lobster business. If you recall, the plant burned down a couple of months ago. Uh, we are still in the process of considering what we do with it. We're most likely going to sell the business, uh, but we have taken precautions and written off all the goodwill uh, and all the assets in this. Net profit, $2 billion, to be exact, $2.056 billion uh, net income. That's a net profit up of 50% to prior year. Uh, we see uh, even improvement in Red Lobster in this difficult period uh, of Red Lobster. We see improvement. Uh, we see very prudent FX management. Uh, and we see uh, improvement on share of profit from our uh, non-consolidated affiliated companies like Avanti Feeds in India doing really well. Uh, so all around, we're really satisfied with this performance. But um, despite all this, I do want to raise a little bit of a voice of caution. Uh, we are in the middle of a crisis. COVID is with us. It will remain with us for quite a while. Um, so it is very hard to predict how is the next quarter running. We need to be vigilant. We need to be on our feet. We need to act quickly. Uh, that is why we also will not later on give an outlook uh, uh, to all of you. Um, uh, we're happy we performed really well and we take this quarter by quarter. We will continue our cash preservation measures. We will continue to be vigilant on cost. And our CEO, he has just announced uh, inside the group uh, that for the budget 2021, uh, we will go really cautious on cost increments. We go really cautious on discretionary spending. And we want to maximize the benefits that we have during this uh, crisis period. We really want to keep the improved business practices going forward. Next page. Uh, so nine months. Uh, look, uh, up 70, uh, reported profit up 74%. Not a big surprise. Last year we had a... $60 million uh, uh, entry on uh, antitrust. So that's not a, not a super surprise. But if we even eliminate that, we have a massive increase in underlying profitability for nine months, most of it coming from uh, Q2. And now Q3, we have reported profit up 74, net profit up 15.1. Uh, EBITDA up 6.4, operating profit up 43, gross profit up 17, and total sales up 6% for the nine months. So um, we see some of this in our share price development. I think there has been a recognition that the business is doing well, and we are getting through this crisis in a very uh, manageable way. We have improved our net debt to equity again, back down to 0 0.97. Cash performance is really strong. I'm very proud of operating businesses that we have that um, are really managing CapEx extremely responsibly, that are managing discretionary spending extremely uh, responsibly. For nine months, we're at 4.8 billion in net income. Uh, the next page is our longer term tracking on uh, revenue, on gross profit and on net profit. And uh, look, I, I still remember Q1 2018, when we were all sitting here and we were explaining to you that basically our business uh, didn't earn much money and we were on an 11.6% cross margin. We are now on 18.2%, and Q2 was 18.2%. We're coming off four quarters before that. There were 16%, around 16%. So if you look at these steps up from 12 to 15, 
to 17 to 18 percent. Uh, of course, there are some uh, favorabilities that we see during the crisis, uh, but it is also a real thank you to the organization, all our factories to be resilient during this period of time and to manage opportunities as and when they come. Um, we have some key developments and business updates uh, uh, for you. Uh, thriving to the new normal. I think new normal is a, is a term we're using. I think we are in a new normal. All key businesses are back to growth. Very, very happy to say that Ambient, as discussed, strong sales push in all key markets. In Thailand, getting a bit weaker in Q3. Um, I think uh, Thailand, we can really see consumers have uh, adjusted. The country's open again. Uh, so some of the favorabilities we have in Q, uh, we had in Q2 have normalized back. But I really want to stress, in all of this normalization back, in no case have we lost anything compared to normal run rates. So the excess demand that we saw in Q2 and partly in Q3 is really going into consumption. And uh, that is really important for us because it shows that this trend will continue. And we see new consumers coming into the category. And if we can come now with NPD that we have in the pipeline, we will see that we can keep and retain these consumers. Frozen business is back on track. F&B is reopening. Uh, we have a lot of new channels, online channels. Grocery is growing well, so we're really happy. Pet care, value add, and other businesses delivered 12% uh, year-over-year growth. Uh, there's a really strong demand. Um, this is how we have ended on top line in Q2. A lot of uh, rewards, uh, awards and recognitions. Uh, we're, we're really proud to see uh, that there is recognition for what we do and we're recognized by leading organizations. Uh, the Asian Excellence Awards uh, have given Kuntirapong the best CEO of Asia. We have Asia's best CSR uh, with best investor relation uh, here. And Kun Best, uh, here right next to me, has been recognized as the best IR professional. Uh, yeah, hey, you can be proud of that. So very, very happy. Um, we've been recognized by Intra, intra Fish in the seafood power 100, the most powerful people uh, in the seafood industry. We, we have uh, Kuntirapong, of course, uh, among them, uh, appearing here on, on place number one. Uh, so he's the most influential person in the seafood industry. But on place number 46, we have Darian McBain, our sustainability director. And this means something. It means that the seafood industry has embraced sustainability as a very important pillar of its future survival and its future success. So we're very, very happy about that. Uh, we have received with Kun uh, uh, Yong Yut uh, the, uh, the Treasury Team of the Year Award in Thailand by Assets Asia for 2020 some great achievements uh, that we have had here. And then on the next page, I think we have a couple more uh, around sustainability. Uh, we've received the SDG Impact Award. Uh, we are recognized as a role model uh, organization for best practices in human rights. And look, all of you who know me, this is very dear to my personal heart. I'm, I'm very touched by all the great things that we are doing. And of course, we've been included again in the FTSE for Good Emerging Index for the fifth consecutive year. Um, innovation, and we uh, presented to you uh, a couple of weeks ago in a special talk that we had uh, our innovation uh, drive. And we've done four new investments in food tech startups, through our Thai Union Corporate Venture Capital Fund. As you know, we've set aside $30 million into a 
dedicated CVC uh, vehicle. Uh, and we've now deployed uh, four investments, additional four investments, Alchemy Food Tech, uh, uh, Mana Foods, and Hydro Neo. And we've put money into an alternative protein fund with Vires, new protein in Singapore. And with this, we're really driving outside in innovation uh, across Asia. So it's not just Thai companies we're investing in. Mana Foods is an American uh, an American startup with three amazing young uh, entrepreneurs who are driving this alchemy food tech, a Singaporean couple uh, that does uh, uh, special ingredients for improved glucose absorption in uh, rice, especially for Asian population and Asian diners and Hydro Neo, a German uh, supply chain technology uh, enterprise. Uh, plant-based uh, seafood, uh, plant-based meat is in everybody's uh, on everybody's top list. And look, maybe we didn't talk about it a lot, but uh, we have products that we have uh, rolled out in our OEM space. Um, we are building an ecosystem around some of the food tech startups uh, to drive innovation in food. Uh, so we really are on trend with this and we are plugged in insect uh, protein, uh, plant-based protein. We have here in Thailand a business called Let's Plant Meat that is doing exceedingly well. That is now in our second batch of the Space F Accelerator program. Uh, and through our Global Innovation Center, uh, we've started to do a lot of businesses um, that we have. And for those of you uh, who can join us tomorrow, where, where are we? At the Okura Prestige Hotel uh, in our analyst conference, uh, don't have breakfast. <laughs> so come uh, without having had breakfast. We have something for you and we, wanna, uh, we want you to enjoy uh, some of the alternative um, delicacies uh, uh, that we have um, uh, real right there for you to try. Next page. Um, so yeah, we're committed to bringing healthy and tasty alternative uh, protein products to consumers, alternative diets. We strengthen, it also strengthens our sustainability vision. It has a lower environmental impact. Uh, the market is amazingly huge. And, and I'm personally very, very proud to be part of this, to be speaking to some of these young entrepreneurs uh, that have really a very, very agile mindset. And I'm very happy we as Thai Union can learn from them, but we can also contribute to them uh, to grow more. Uh, here on the page, a couple of products that we've launched in our private label. Uh, space uh, under our own brands, under food service, and under private label. And with this, and I probably have talked too much already again, uh, I'd like to pass to Ludo Thanks. to give you a bit more substance. Thanks a lot, Jörg. Thank you for that. Um, so if we go through the key takeaway uh, of the quarter, and we mentioned this one, uh, in terms of financial results, we are very happy. Top line, we have a very strong growth. This is the third quarter in a row that we deliver some growth. 9.3% is very high. You need to keep in mind that for this quarter, which is a change compared to the previous quarter, we are benefiting from a positive FX impact. So if you exclude the FX, the growth is 6.4%, still very high. And this is mostly driven by our ambient business in the US and in Thailand, but also the other categories the frozen business and also the pet care and value-added business are also growing and we will show that in a bit. Gross profit margin is very high, 18.2. This is the same performance that we achieved already in Q2. We are already very happy in Q2 and we, we maintain the same performance in Q3. Um, it is to be compared to 15.9% last year. The key explanation for such high gross profit margin is the mix. Uh, the mixed category, the ambient business, is very strong in terms of percentage in our business, um, but also the individual gross profit margin for each businesses are also good. 
Um, in terms of uh, OP, very solid OP at 2 billion baht, which is good. Um, we have some, some one-off and we'll talk about this one. Jörg mentioned this one, the goodwill impairment of the right of, the, of TU Canada for 183. If you exclude this one, then the OP would amount to 2.2 billion baht. SGNA percentage are a bit high um, this quarter. Of course, we have the Tayun Canada goodwill impairment, which is recorded this one. If you exclude this one, then the, the SGNA percentage becomes 11.9%. And this is mostly explained by some brand investment. And I will, I will get back to this one. Uh, one of the key change compared to Q1 and Q2, because we did already in Q1 and in Q2 some very strong operating performance, and we do the same in Q3. One of the key changes below the OP, we also have some good news um, on the different line. First of all, the, the, the share of profit is positive and Red Lobster is still negative. In Q3, we will show this one yet recovering compared to the huge loss we had to face with in Q2 2020. Yet they are still declining versus last year. I will get back to this, uh, this one. As a result, our net profit is very high, 2.1 billion baht increasing by 50% 50, um, 50 compared to last year. The other lines are also positive. We are benefiting some, from some FX gain. Um, we have other income also which are positive and only the tax are increasing compared to last year. But as a result, very strong financial performance in, in Q3. Next, one of the key driver is of course the, the tuna price. Um, and you, if you remember, we have this, uh, this range where we say, okay, the, the, the tuna price can be in this range and, and this is aligned with our expectation. And you can see that in Q320, the average tuna price was around 1,500. So it was quite okay for us. It was, it was meeting with our expectation. Um, you could see it in October, it went down at 1,300, not a surprise that was expected. We will see what's happening for, for November and, the, and December, but we were quite happy and quite lucky with the, the fish price in Q320. Next. So just a quick focus on the sales. So the sales, we achieved 34.8 billion baht in Q3 2020. Uh, again, increasing by 9.3% versus last year, 6.4 if you exclude the, the, the FX. And compared to Q2 2020, we are increasing by 5.2. Um, once again, we want to insist this quarter, all the segments are growing. Um, the, 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 the ambient business, the frozen business, and also all together, the, the pet care and value-added businesses are all growing. Okay. In terms of region, uh, Jörg mentioned this one. This is mostly thanks to the, um, the Thai OEM business, which is delivering and performing really well, and also the US operation. Over nine months, we are just below 99 billion baht um, sales over nine months, and we are increasing by five, almost 6% compared to last year. So I, I think this is really one of the key factors for this year. Of course, we are benefiting from some push and an exception, exceptional situation from the COVID-19, yet the performance is still, is, is still very good. Next, next slide um, is, is a view by segment. And here you can see for Q3, uh, where does the, co the growth come from? Um, and you can see a very strong push coming from tuna uh, on the ambient, but also on the other seafood, which is mostly our US operation, US frozen operation in the US. Um, plus we have also the pet care and the value added, which are growing, okay? So this is the first time since the beginning of the year that we have at the same side, um, at the same time, all the, the three categories growing all together. Of course, we are still facing some few headwinds for some, some, some segments like sardine and mackerel, like shrimp or like salmon, where for the time being, this quarter we were uh, underperforming compared to last year. But overall, the picture is really good. I want to insist also on the effects, the two last boxes, green boxes on the top right, uh, very strong effect coming from the euro and also a smaller one coming from the USD. If you remember, we were facing a negative FX impact over the last quarters. Uh, but this Q3, the situation changed, and now we are delivering some quite positive impact from, from this one. Next slide, please. So here we don't have any big change. This is our traditional breakdown by geographies, by regions, and also by business. Uh, the US and Europe are increasing a bit compared to Q2. Uh, compared to 2019, 42% for the US, just below 30% for Europe. Uh, we have a drop in our domestic business in Thailand. Uh, around 10%. Um, if you compare to 18 and 19, we are more around 11 and 12%. So we are suffering from the fact that we have less tourists 
in um, in Thailand, and as a result, our domestic business is is decreasing. Um, in terms of breakdown between brand and private table, we don't have any significant change. Next, and I think this is the the, the next achievement I want to insist on. Uh, we already mentioned in Q2 2020 uh, when we when we delivered 18.2 percent that we were very happy with this performance. We are delivering the same in um, in Q3 2020. Uh, the, the gross profit delivered is at 6.3 billion baht. And if you look at the, the increase compared to last year, 20, just below 25%, we are very happy with this one. And, and uh, uh, really the good success of this quarter is to have at the same time, again, all the, um, all the, the categories increasing and improving compared to, compared to last year. Uh, again, we want to remain very cautious. Um, we don't know what will be the situation coming from COVID-19. And we are fully aware that we are benefiting in 2020 on some exceptional circumstances. Okay. However, so far over the nine months, we delivered a gross profit margin at 7.6%. If you compare to the situation, uh, the track record, we were always between 14 to 15%. Uh, we are very happy to deliver such a high performance. Next, OP is just the result of this one at 2 billion baht for Q3 2020 at 5.9 billion baht over nine months. Uh, very strong recovery compared to last year. Again, the SGN are a bit high, 12.4%, 12, 12 but they include uh, the, the goodwill impairment of TU Canada. If you, if you exclude this one, then we are at 11.9%. If you remember, and we did communicate on this one in Q2, in Q2, we decided to, to delay some marketing campaign and, and these ones were executed in Q3, both in the US and also in Europe. And that's why our, our SGNA uh, ratio is a bit high in, um, in Q3. Next, EBDA is just a result. So we have very strong OP, but even between the OP and the EBIT, we have some good news. The share profit is back to profit. If you remember in Q1 and Q2, it was a share of loss. So we still have a share of loss coming from the lobster, but this is offset by the gain coming from the other affiliate. And, and Aventi is clearly one of the key components and is doing really well in, uh, in 2020. So EBDA at 3.9 billion baht in Q3 20, um, improving by 22% compared to Q3 19 uh, and improving also by 16%. So over nine months, we are just below 10 billion baht um, EBDA um, for, for nine months 2020. Next one. So net profits, uh, we discussed about this one, 50% increase compared to last year, we had 2.1. Um, and if we talk about the other line, apart from the share profit and the EBIT, we have also some lower finance costs. Um, if you remember, we issued in Q4 19, some perpetual bonds. So this is a key driver for the, the decrease of the finance cost. We are also facing some higher tax expense uh, compared to compared to last year, this is this is explained by the improved profitability compared to last year. So as a result, over nine months, we achieve 4.8 billion baht uh, net sales, and the percentage of NSV is 4.6 percent, which is which is very high. Of course, in this one, and, and we added a quick note on this one. Um, if you exclude the share of loss coming from Red Lobster, then the net profit would be more uh, in the range of 5.7 billion baht. Uh, really growing also compared to last year. Next. Let me add to this. Please. Um, if you take the 5.7 billion baht and exclude the share of loss from Red Lobster, um, we, we basically exceed prior year's uh, net income after nine months. Mm -hmm. So you see how strong this underlying earnings engine has been uh, in our ambient uh, seafood business, especially here from Thailand, but also uh, from our operations in the US, limited in Europe, but uh, primarily with a uh, base here in Thailand. Thanks. Thanks, Jörg. So if we get back to the slides, please. So the net profit I just mentioned about this one, I think we can move to the next one. So here we are talking about the adjusted net profit. So we have one significant one-off um, that, that we want to report for this Q3. This is ready to um, our subsidiary in Canada, TU Canada. We did impair the goodwill for 183 because we have some lack of visibility uh, regarding the future of the operations there. 
and we have a very small tax related items total is close to 200 million baht so the adjusted net profit is at 2255 million baht compared to uh, compared to last year next eps is of course just a result of of this improving by 44% for the quarter and improving by, by 10% if you compare over, over nine months. Okay, no, no significant one off to report there. If we just move to Red Lobster, so I guess we shared this slide already in the past. Um, so just, just to, to say that we, you, we did sign the restructuring of the shareholding within Red Lobster. So we still remain the, the minority shareholder, but now we are the first one in terms of size. Um, we, if you remember, we communicated on the fact that now we have a new partner which is called Seafood Alliance. And, and, and we can communicate on the way that they, they are really on board now. And they are really helping us also on how to manage the, the business in Red Lobster. If you go to the next slide. So here you have the perf financial performance of Red Lobster. A few comments on this one. Uh, Q3 2020, we are still delivering a share of loss by 54 million baht, okay? If you compare to last year, Q3 1934, we, are, we, we don't recover exactly to the same level than last year. Of course, if you compare to Q2 2020, where we are really facing, facing a bleeding here, we are really recurring to Q2 20. So the message here, we see some improvement of the performance. We are careful here, as you know, as you know and if you, as you remember, Q4 is always a traditionally loss making, uh, the heavy losses in the, in the quarter. So we want to see the development happening in, uh, in Q4 20, but we can see really some good signs um, in Q3 2020. Apart from that, the other income is quite flat. The interest expense also no big change on this one. So overall, the net contribution from Red Lobster is positive in Q320 at 82 million baht uh, compared to 132 in, in, uh, in Q319. Maybe one topic, do you want to comment the refinancing? Uh, there was a lot of discussion around the refinancing, a lot of questions that people asked. Uh, we have started the refinancing process. We are in active discussions with people here in Asia. Uh, we are in active discussions with uh, financial advisors in the United States. If you, uh, if you look at the markets, the debt markets are actually very, very deep at the moment. You see that after a hike in interest rates uh, at the height of COVID in uh, April, May, interest rates are actually falling, uh, and there is an absolute surge for yield in uh, the debt capital markets. So people have a lot of a lot of money to deploy. Uh, there are a, a limited number of assets out there where people can invest into debt. Um, so we feel really positive that debt financing can happen. Uh, we've deleveraged the company. There's a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Uh, if you compare pre-COVID and post-COVID, uh, we are actually doing really well uh, through this crisis. We're not through the crisis. We're not at the end of it. And you see now the second wave coming. So we still need to be vigilant and careful. But uh, if you look at cash generation uh, and what we have on the balance sheet right now, um, we feel we can give uh, another cut in um, uh, uh, in debt reduction and deleveraging, and what is left over uh, to be refinanced. We feel uh, there are people out there who should be able to take this. And as I said, we are in advanced discussions here in Asia, uh, but we are also in discussions with others. And uh, I feel quite confident confident that uh, ultimately debt financing is possible. And look, as I said before, uh, we have invested a lot of money in Red Lobster. We are, we are now the largest shareholder. We're very interested that this business will succeed. We believe it will succeed. We believe that we can reach $150 million in EBITDA in the next four to six years. Uh, and if the company needs financial support, we will be ready to provide to an extent uh, financial support, so together with external lenders, um, refinancing uh, is on its way. Thanks, Jörg. 
just just back to the slide. So here we wanted to to uh, to add a quick reminder on the the changes which happened at, at Red Lobster. We did communicate on this one, so I, I, will, I will go quick just to remind you that before we were owning 49% on a diluted basis and Golden Gate Capital were the key shareholders with 51. And now you can see on the right, the new picture, we still have 49%. So there is no change in our common units on our preferred units on a fully diluted basis. But now we have these new partners, Seafood Alliance, they own 36%. And then we have the also Red Lobster Management who owns 15% of the business. One of the key development of this, this quarter is we also confirm with, with, uh, with our auditor that we will continue to record 25% of share of profit uh, and loss coming from uh, Red Lobster. It was a very long discussion because the transaction is quite complex, but now it was confirmed. Next. Um, we just wanted to insist on some few developments performed by Red Lobster. Um, so just for your information, now we have 99% of the restaurants which are open. 94% of them are open for dining hall. Um, of course, the capacity is reduced compared to the situation before. Uh, uh, in average, around 50%, we have some where we are, we are a bit above and some others where we are at 25% only. And there are some few initiatives. We, we already mentioned this one, but I just want to insist on some few of them. Uh, we really, they really, they are really driving a cost cutting um, program. They are really simplifying the menu um, they, are, they are trying also in few restaurants some outdoor dining. So here we have some few examples of some, some initiatives where we are, they are really trying to turn around the business and be very agile and trying also some new things. Next. Cash flow situation. This is for us, honestly, one of the good surprises of this quarter. Um, if you remember after Q2, Q2, Q2 performance in terms of cash flow was really exceptional at 5.6 billion. And we told you that we expect the situation to kind of normalize in Q3 and in Q4. In Q3, the situation is still very good. Um, we delivered 2.5 billion baht cash flow, um, thanks to a very strong EBIT. Uh, also, the networking capital is not back to the level we were expecting, um, which is good. However, we still expect some kind of normalization um, to happen in Q4. You can see over nine months, we delivered 9.2 billion baht cash flow very high and already higher compared to the, the previous year's 12 months performance. Next. Let me, let, uh, let let me just at that, at that page, right? Uh, we shared with you our cash preservation program that we started end of March. And, uh, and, and look, we, 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 at the beginning, we were sitting together on a weekly basis, uh, one hour and reviewed cash flows, CapEx, SGNA, inventories, accounts payable, accounts receivable. We went through overdue accounts receivables uh, every week and we moved this to a bi-weekly rhythm. And I, and I really want to thank the whole team. Uh, my own team uh, here, Kun Yung Yud, Ludo, uh, but also the team in the US, in Europe, here in Thailand, to really vigilant, vigilantly and in detail follow up very, very clearly on cash preservation. Cash preservation uh, and the cash preservation program has been one of the most successful programs uh, that we have run uh, here in Thai Union uh, under the umbrella of our crisis management team, uh, uh, including all the leaders of the company. And I can only say this has led, at least for me, I have learned a lot during this process uh, the power of, uh, of expanded communication with so many people through the, through the organization, a lot more communication, collaboration, sharing of information, and really the question of deciding in minutes and no longer deciding in months. Uh, that really has changed the way how we operate the business. We are much quicker in responding to issues. And this is the result that we see. And I have to say, I really want to thank the whole team uh, to continue uh, on this very, very vigilant path. Thanks, thank you. Um, just a quick focus on the net debt. So here kind of the same situation we are facing at the end of Q2. So we managed to decrease the net debt uh, by 2.5 billion baht. One of the key change of the quarter, we did paid 
some dividend, but even with uh, even uh, with this one, we managed to uh, to keep the, the the net debt to equity ratio at 0 0.97, very close to what we have uh, at the end of Q2. So very good development here. I go quick. Next one, um, just a quick one, just for you to have in mind. Here we are approaching now uh, the maturity for some of our bonds. So we're initiating the, the discussion with uh, with some partners on on how to refinance this one. I mean, very normal process. In terms of currency, we don't have any significant change. Very, very stable situation. Next. Ratio, so here you can you can see all the profitability ratio are improving. Not a big surprise, we have a, quite a strong profitability happening in Q3 2020. Net debt, net debt to EBDA um, is at 4.17. Uh, this is good. We said that the, the, the target for us was to be between four to 4.5. Net debt to equity just below one. I think this is also good, but also the the, the networking capital indicators are good. You can see the, the inventories, the days in inventories, one twenty three, and we have very strong performance over the last three quarters between one twenty, one twenty two, and one twenty three. This is good, uh, and the same also for our networking capital situation. Of course, these two are one of the key driver of the the very strong cash flow performance in uh, in twenty twenty. Next, and having said that, I think I will pass it through to Kunbest uh, to comment for the rest. And for the, the, the key operating business and the operating factor, uh, we have seen for the tuna uh, chemo material in pricing, the only key change comes on the tuna pricing, where we see the tuna price year and year increase by 23% and on quarter and quarter increase by 18%. Why this has been a key cause of concern for a lot of investors out there, we have been clearly proven that during the third quarter, with the tuna price still stay within the range that we have been always indicated, we can still manage to maintain our margin at a, at a very good level. Okay, and now uh, toward the end of October, the tuna price already been coming down to about 1,300 US dollars per ton. Uh, we believe that uh, right now, I mean, and which is already within our expectation, uh, we believe that we can, uh, at this current price, we can still manage uh, our raw material price and our cost structure very well. Outside of that, trim and salmon has been relatively unchanged. Uh, otherwise, I mean, on during the third quarter in particular, we have seen a more positive benefits from the bad depreciating against key currency. Uh, U.S. dollars term, not so much. The third quarter U.S. Uh, Thai baht against U.S. dollar was depreciated by only 2%, but versus the euro and pounds, we have seen the baht depreciation by 7 and 7% uh, 7 uh, against both the key European currency. That has been part of the key reason uh, that, dry, that continue to drive our European sales uh, in, term, in Thai baht term in, at, at least. In terms of the uh, going down to uh, ambient seafood and segment uh, details, I mean, clearly, uh, Jörg and Ludo has been mentioned this before. We continue to see a strong ambient growth uh, with the people continuing to cook more at home and make their, their food uh, at home. Uh, we have seen clearly seen the uh, increased consumption here. And not only that, well, with the sales growth of 12% and quantity growth of about 9%, we clearly pass on some of those price increase to, to, uh, to the, our customer. And as a result, our gross profit margin continues to be solid at 22%. We see most of this growth mostly in both OEM Thailand export and uh, the US market. For the frozen business, we are now back to growth uh, with the sales of 13.4 billion uh, Thai baht during the third quarter. Now sales up by 5% uh, with a, uh, and now with the sales already up to a more normalized level, we are now start seeing the gross profit margin resume to the normal level of 11%. Uh, this is up from about 7 to 8% during the first two quarters of this year. And on pet care value added, we continue to deliver the high growth of 12%. Uh, this is clearly driven by the quantity growth and the margin is continuing to be high, about 26%. Clearly the, the strong drive toward innovative product, uh, both on the pet care category and the ingredient category has been pushing uh, the margin uh, of this segment favorably. But let me, let me add here to this, and we don't talk about this very often. So. Uh, this segment, pet care value added and others, is, is really three parts, right? It's pet care, it is the value added segment, and it is primarily our can making business, Asia Pacific cans. It's a, 
uh, an operation that we have here in Thailand that makes most of the cans that we, the, 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 the metal cans that we use in our production. And I want to I want to really flag and, and highlight this business. We, we usually don't talk about it. Um, APC, that's how we call it internally, Asia Pacific Can, uh, have gone through a transformation process that has led to a massive reduction in material cost, to a dramatic reduction in quality cost by reducing sorting of cans, by being first time right, uh, by a real, real strong improvement, operational improvement uh, done here by the team. Uh, and this is a really material profit contributor in this business and is in no way lagging behind pet care or other businesses. An amazing uh, a progress that we see. Uh, and this is the second year in a row that they do this. Uh, I, I really want to uh, put my hands out to the team of APC uh, for their contribution uh, also to our bottom line here. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for adding. I mean, we are now back to the, the growth by geography. Okay, I mean, clearly we have seen a, a real strong growth coming from the U.S. market. Uh, the sales from the U.S. market has been growing by 27% uh, compared to the same period last year. The growth was both driven by the ambient seafood and the frozen seafood. Of course, I mean, we continue to see the, the more home cooking. As well as during the third quarter, we see that the food service operation has resumed that business. So as a result, we are, uh, we are seeing increased demand uh, for, for our frozen seafood as well. This is a big part that leads to growth uh, in the US and Canada market. On the other hand, European, we did not see so much of the organic growth uh, in the market. The, the, the market has been grown by 7.2%. But as uh, I do note earlier, I mean, the Thai budget has been depreciating significantly against euro, euro and pounds by roughly about 7% as well. Um, and excluding currency effect, uh, we are seeing still some growth, but, but it's, it will be much lower than 7%. For the Thai market, uh, it has been declined by 14%. This is mostly due to the lower tourism activity. Uh, and uh, we, we, we are continuing to, to have the lower sales in the, the local market, but the, our local capacity has been mainly serving for the, the overseas export demand. The rest of the world was a mixed bag. Uh, Why we have seen some experience, uh, some decline in a frozen segment uh, that we are exporting outside, mainly to the market like China and Japan. Uh, we are still seeing the, the growth in the ambient seafood to the, to the rest of the other market, like the Middle East and the Africa, which has been growing very well. But overall, I mean, uh, the, the sales in the emerging market and the rest of the world has been declined by about 7% in the third quarter compared to the same period last year. Uh, otherwise, I mean, this is the mix. I mean, the sales has been very strong, uh, growing at overall at 9.3% with a strong gross profit margin of 18.2%, ties in with the record that we have made it in the second quarter of this year, uh, resulting in a gross profit of, of 6.3 billion, which is already uh, an excellent profit that we make during the quarter. I'd like to pass this back to, to Jörg uh, to discuss about what can we say? <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, uh, as I said, as I said before, uh, I think we are in a in a volatile situation. Uh, we should be humble and and be grateful that things went really well uh, for us. We should be proud that our teams uh, were able to manage uh, uh, any crisis situation, any COVID case, any. A suspected COVID case in all our locations. We uh, had to close our office in Paris, in Europe. Most offices are, are closed and people work from home. Um, so I think, look, I, I rather focus on things we, are very, we can be very grateful uh, about. And I don't think there's any time to be boastful or uh, be overwhelmingly uh, positive on uh, how things have gone. Of course, things have gone well. Uh, yes, this was a great quarter. This was the best quarter in our history. And in, in many ways, uh, uh, there are benefits coming our way during the COVID crisis. But uh, I do want us to be cautious. Um, the overall volatility uh, of uh, the business uh, is there. 
there is an underlying volatility. I think we've been uh, reacting to it really, really well. Um, and look, I mean, if you if you just look at here at our at our displays here, where we start with uh, a new products that uh, have uh, omega three essence inside, uh, where we have what is this? Where we have tuna oil pills that we bring to market, where we have bone calcium, uh, 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 tuna calcium. Uh, that we have as products. And we talk to customers and clients about it, but also here we have our Parmentier brand that uh, together with Alexis in uh, our MD in Paris, uh, we're relaunching and, and getting back to a, to a growth momentum. So uh, look, I think a lot of things went well, and I think uh, a lot of our operators reacted extremely well in the US a uh, very, very good response to this crisis. Um, uh, but I, look, I, I think we need to uh, stay humble. We need to stay careful. We need to look at this day by day. Uh, and then we see how Q4 goes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not pessimistic. Uh, I'm not negative. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the exact opposite of that. But uh, I also don't <laughs> want to. I also don't want to want us to be uh, now opening the party. We still have three months to go. Uh, well, two months to go to close the year. Uh, a lot can happen in these two months. And look, we need to stay on the ball every day. We need to stay agile. We need to manage our costs uh, so that we get through the uh, uh, through the final steps to close out this year. I think it will be a good year, uh, but we need to really be uh, careful, manage this well, and I'm sure we will. Uh, people are on the ball. People are uh, observant. Um, but please do apologize. We're not going to give any guidance. Uh, on how things go. The situation is too volatile for that. Um, but I think if you look at the numbers and if you know the way Ludo and Kunvest and I usually speak and give in between, uh, in, in between the lines mm -hmm. indications, I think, I think you, you, you get, the, you, you get some, some idea where we're gonna be headed. But we still wanna be careful uh, we need to be careful. Uh, things can happen. It's a volatile situation. Europe's in lockdown. Um, uh, the U.S. is in a in a hung in a hung election, and uh, yeah, things things are are as they are, and we have to manage them day by day. I think we can look at Ludo's smile as a as a cue. <laughs> Would be one indication. <laughs> Shall we move to the Q&A right. session, Kunbest? We will go into the Q&A session. Let's We've got Q &A. a lot of questions here. Are there questions? Ludo, yeah, maybe, it's your pick. It's your maybe, pick. Maybe I take the first one. Um, we have some question re uh, on the on the high SGNA percentage uh, that we have for Q3 and what are the key drivers behind. Um, as we mentioned, uh, we have in this line the, the goodwill impairment for, for TU Canada, something around 180, 200 million baht. Um, if you exclude this one, we are at 11.9% of NSV, still a bit high, but mostly explained by the marketing campaign uh, that we executed in Q3. If you remember, we delayed this one in Q2 because of the COVID-19 situation, and now they were executed mostly in the US and also in Europe. These are the key two items explaining the, the SGNA. You want me to talk about Canada, uh, uh, Ludo? Up to you, up to you. Pick up one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just go one by one. So Canada, what's what's your plan with Thai Union Canada? She knew uh, how's the asset uh, after the fire incident. I think we've shared with you. We had three buildings. Two have burned down. Uh, so there is some base operations still there. Uh, but look, the question on whether to rebuild, to sell, to close, it's an open question. Uh, we believe there is a value in this asset. Uh, there are people who are likely able to operate this, but maybe it's not us. Uh, so what we've done is we are uncertain about the future. So we decided to write off 
the goodwill uh, and the assets in this business. Uh, we are working with the insurance to see what can be salvaged. Uh, and we are uh, talking to potential buyers. Well, we are more than talking to potential buyers. So there are buyers, there is a buyer uh, who is really interested. Uh, discussions are in advanced, uh, in an advanced stage. And we believe uh, this, this has a very, very good chance to get over the hump. Uh, but we also want to see what our insurance uh, people are saying. Uh, we, we, we need to manage this uh, carefully. Next question, Jörg, is, re is on the, the share of profit. Um, so what is the key driver also for the strong share of profit in Q3? Um, so we discussed, you know, if you remember, we have two key components here. We have Red Lobster and we discussed the numbers. And yes, they are, they are improving compared to Q2, but they are slightly deteriorating compared to Q319. So the key driver is Aventi's performance. Uh, Aventi, our partner in India, is doing really well in 2020. Uh, and this is a key driver for the growth. We have also some growth coming from the other smaller, smaller associates, but the, the key component is really Aventi, Aventi's performance. But look, let's get back to, uh, to Red Lobster quickly. So uh, look, we're, we're getting into the, into the difficult uh, seasonality for Red Lobster. So Q4 will be difficult as they usually are in, in the seasonality. Uh, but what we can say is that the massive cost reductions that we've implemented, and I want to remind you, we've uh, taken out uh, nearly 30% of our headquarter costs. We've taken out 70% of our marketing costs. We've taken out 30% uh, of our restaurant managers uh, to improve restaurant operations. We've driven restaurant op uh, productivity by 15% during this crisis. So we've done a lot, a lot, a lot on the cost structure for Red Lobster, and that does materialize in uh, the results. Uh, but of course, the rent abatements are a very, very large part of that. Uh, all of them were temporary between three and nine months, on average around five to six months rent abatement uh, in this year. And uh, I'm, I'm certain uh, now with the second wave of red lobster, uh, uh, second wave of COVID, um, uh, this topic will still be on the top of our review in the board um, uh, to go forward. So the rent abatement at this stage has been temporary, uh, but I think we've not, uh, we're not at the end of this discussion. This question is on the, the, the other income line, uh, which is indeed a bit high in Q3, in Q3 2020. Um, so we are benefiting from some insurance claim uh, on our German factory. If you remember one year ago, the German factory burns and then we received some insurance claim in Q3 2020. And also we receive also a portion of our TU Canada insurance claim also in, um, in Q3 2020. So question is on frozen business, uh, why did it recover? Which market led to the recovery? It is clearly the US market. Uh, the team around Brian and those of you who dialed into the last call where we had our executives here, uh, you know Brian Rosenberg. He's uh, <laughs> leading our North American business. And, and he has done a remarkable job around this frozen business. We are above last year. We've come out of this crisis. We've pivoted uh, on inventories and assets that we have. We are, uh, we've, we've done a great business around crab. Uh, so there it has been really good development to so the U.S. businesses leading this recovery. Um, but we also see here in Thailand some of the operations to come back. Q4 is typically one of the stronger quarters for our frozen business. So we'll see some good news there. So next one is regarding the outlook for Q4 2020. So here I think Jörg, you already mentioned this one. The numbers until now nine months are really high, really strong. Uh, we don't want to forecast anything for Q4. We want to remain very cautious. And, and yes, clearly the environment is, is highly volatile. So we don't share any, any forecast numbers for the, for the whole year. Um, that's it. So GSP cut uh, to the operation. I, I think we really need to smarten up ourselves a bit more about w how that in detail uh, may affect us uh, from a first 
review, we don't think there has been a lot of benefit that we had in the past. So now with the GSP cut, we will also not have any negative effects. Um, so I, uh, I, I doubt that there is anything material. Let us go back, analyze this a bit more. But uh, for now, I would say uh, this will not affect our operation. So we have one question regarding what could be the, the potential impact of, of Joe, Joe Biden or Trump uh, winning the, the presidential election in the US. Uh, so you, we usually don't comment on the political events. Of course, we will see the, the results of the elections and we will see the potential impact on the, on the tax, but we are not commenting these ones. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, as a non-American, number one, at least I don't have a vote. I don't even think anyone who is not American needs to have a very strong view on this. It is certainly a great show, that's that's for sure. Uh, but look, the way we assess this is, of course, um, uh, the two parties have different uh, directions. If you look at uh, the tax effect, uh, you could perceive that there could be a short-term effect if uh, one party wins compared to the other. Um, at the same time, I would think it's doubtful that this has a major impact on corporate income taxes. Uh, the benefits of the current regime uh, are visible, so I would expect that whoever wins will be very cautious uh, in, in making any radical changes. Um, so look, we, we take it as it comes, uh, but we do not expect that there is any uh, impact on our business one way or the other. Next question is regarding one-off. Do we anticipate any one-off to happen in Q4? At this stage, no, but I, I agree over the last two, two years, we had some one-off happening in, uh, in, uh, in Q4, but at, at this stage, we don't have, we don't have any. Let's see about the, the next two months, what, what is going to happen. So Lina, you need to make the type font bigger because I can't <laughs> read it. <laughs> we, we, have, we have here a little teleprompter and, and but it's maybe it's my glasses, I, I don't know. Uh, what's the sales and uh, growth? Uh, what's the sales growth and traffic in RL and Q3? Look, we are 25, 25, 26 percent below prior year. So, and this is a is a pretty this is pretty stable. It has it has stabilized around minus 25, uh, minus 26 percent uh, compared to prior year. Off premise is very strong. Now the second wave is growing again, and uh, of course we're very affected by. Some states uh, ordering shutdowns on and off. We are 96% open uh, for our dining halls. Um, but overall, in terms of where we are stabilized, is around, yeah, minus 25, 26% by year. Next question is regarding our gross profit margin. Uh, Jörg, and what, what would be a sustainable level of gross profit margin in 21? I understand from the question. So here, what we explained over the last few quarters, we have benefited from a, a positive overall impact from the COVID-19. There were a very strong push from the ambient business, um, which explained, which is one of the key driver for our strong growth profit margin in, uh, in 2020. We expect in 21 some kind of normalization. Of course, at this stage, it's very difficult to say what will be the COVID-19 situation in 2021. Maybe part of this one will remain, or maybe it will completely disappear. But we would expect some kind of normalization to happen in 2021. We achieved in 2020 some record high gross profit margin. Of course, we want to try to keep this one as, as high as possible, but we are we are really benefiting and enjoying some extraordinary items in 2020. The, the way I would uh, the way I would describe this is that on the one hand, in our core business. It, it's not about expanding from where we are now. It's about how much of what we have achieved can we keep. And there, there will have to be a walk back from the great performances that we have. I think that's, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. At the same time, we of course do not expect 
uh, another one billion uh, a bad negative impact for Red Lobster. Uh, uh, far from it. Uh, we may not be completely break even on net income, but uh, it, it's also not going to be a, 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 a loss situation as we have it now. So we uh, we likely plan with something substantially less than that. So if you mix both together, I still think there is an advancement possible compared to this year. Not possible, but likely. Uh, so overall, even though gross profit may be uh, a, a little bit normalizing below 18%, um, I would think net income is going to expand in 2021. Uh, primarily from uh, improvements in red, lob red lobster compared to this year. We have another question, Jörg, on, on what, is, what are the key drivers behind the red lobster improvement between Q2 and Q3, moving from a loss of 700 million batch of loss to a loss by 54. And what is coming from the cost cutting and what is coming right. from the, so, the core so business? If so if you look at the if you look at the time series, uh, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, uh, then what you saw is that in uh, uh, April we were minus eighty percent revenue. Uh, we then moved to minus seventy percent for some weeks, then we moved to minus fifty percent for some weeks. We're now at minus 25%. So one major driver of the improvement is that you just have an improved revenue. You have a, 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 a revenue run rate uh, per week that uh, is nearing, that has been at, I don't know, 20, $25 million, which is shockingly low. And we are now back again at uh, 40, $45 million. So, um, I think it's a, 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 the first clear function on the improvement is revenue is back uh, from minus 80 to minus 25% of, of prior year. So that's one. The second thing, and I, I mentioned this before, we have gone in this period of April, May, June, through uh, a very, very material cost cut exercise. And, and yes, as Thai Union, we've been part of it. We've actually requested part of it. But Red Lobster management has been very, very agile in taking ownership and really using this time to turn around. We've reduced overhead costs by nearly 30%, marketing costs by 70%, Restaurant management costs by 30%. Restaurant service and head, uh, back of the house productivity by 15%. So very, very strong reduction of cost uh, uh, has happened. At the same time, going to a simplified menu, uh, and a lot of these cost savings have been possible through simplifying the menu from a 20, 25 page menu to a one-page menu. And part of this move has led to a reduction in cost of goods sold as well. As well. So our gross margin, uh, our COX have improved from around 33.5% to 31%, uh, 31.5%. 31 uh, and all this together has led to a, a, a very strong improvement of EBITDA. And last but not least, of course, we had rent abatements um, that we've been able to record. Uh, they have not gone into the PL due to the accounting standards, uh, but they have helped us on the cash flow, of course. So, yeah, that these measures, they are uh, not short term measures, they're sustainable cost reductions. Uh, and now we are back to growth. We need to grow the business, we need to get from minus 25 to minus 20 to minus 15 to minus 10 percent to prior year and once we achieve that uh, uh, we will achieve our improvement to 150 million dollars in EBITDA. So what's the last question can you share what else with this that's what the last one i guess right 
It's Best. The same, the same question. Can you share what, uh, what else Red Lobster has done apart from reopening to drive impressive bottom line? Well, that's what we've done. Uh, and, and look, since we have this ownership change and uh, uh, see for the Lions on board, uh, we have really great discussions with management. Uh, a lot of collaboration has happened. The next level leadership in Red Lobster is really growing up. We are excited about this opportunity. Okay, and that is all of the questions we have on the line. Of course, I mean, uh, please feel free that, uh, to send more questions uh, even after this uh, through IR uh, at thaiunion.com or you can send to our, our line, uh, I mean, if, if, if you have. But otherwise, I mean, uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, I mean, this has been a fantastic quarter. Thank you, the manage, participating management. Thanks, Jörg. Thank you, Ludo, uh, for calling all the way from France. Uh, and I mean, to, just for your information, I mean, tomorrow we have the analyst meeting uh, hold at 10, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Bangkok time. Um, and we will be going to be broadcasted through the Zoom and live Facebook as today. So I mean, if, if there's any further question, please leave it on your Facebook live. We will have, we, we can and we'll raise it further in tomorrow's session. And Ludo, you miss out a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, everyone. You like to welcome anyone? Uh, Thank you. So uh, yeah, see you tomorrow, uh, everyone who can come. Don't eat breakfast. I just hear <laughs> from Lena here uh, that we have the tasting starting at 9.30. 9.30 at the Okura Hotel. Uh, please be welcomed. We have coffee for you. We have tea for you. And we have some great products. See you tomorrow. Have a nice evening. See Thank you guys. You. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.